What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome on back to our Pokemon Platinum walkthrough. And we are getting right into the action because, well, basically I, off camera, accidentally walked through the entrance to Stark Mountain. And I didn't save at any point before recording the last episode. So, you know, I can't like reset my game, so we're just gonna roll with it. We are now in Stark Mountain, just uh, inside of that entrance where we left off at the end of yesterday's video. And Mars and Jupiter are here, and we're actually going to have to take them on, I think, one by one. So, yeah, basically you can see Charon and two galactic grunts that we saw in yesterday's video standing behind them. And they're trying to, you know, carry out this whole operation of getting the Magma Stone so they can get Heatran. And, uh, yeah, here we go. You're gonna get straight into battles with the two commanders, and I started with the wrong Pokemon, which sort of sucks. But Mars now has a Bronzong at level 58, which knows a Light Screen, Gyro Ball, Confuse Ray, and Extra Sensory. So, unfortunately, it already went for Light Screen, so Flamethrower is probably not gonna do too much, but it's about the best I got. I'm predicting, like, a Confuse Ray and then Extra Sensory combo, or just Extra Sensory. That's gonna do... A hefty chunk of damage but uh, yeah we'll see how this goes these could be some of the tougher two battles that you do in the post game gosh look how much that did all right all we can really help for is a crit I don't remember if these um, commanders heal in this battle and oh I thought we got a crit there for a second would have been nice I really hope they don't because then this bronze song becomes like ten times more annoying and this episode's already going to be long enough as it is. We've got a lot of double battles to do because um, as you progress through here, you'll actually team up with the main man, Buck, in order to get to the back room of the big mountain. And, oh boy, just please tell me you don't go for a full restore here, Mars. I went for the wrong move. Oh my gosh. I'm misclicking, dude. All right, well, the good news is they don't heal, so that's good to know. I did heal up off camera, by the way. And yeah, before coming in here, just to make sure you have um, a bunch of max repels. You really don't need healing items because, again, you'll be teaming up with Buck and he'll be healing most of your mons. But uh, yeah, Mars and Jupiter, they have like the same Pokemon as they did before, except now they've got Bronzongs instead of Bronzors. And looks like she's going out to her Perugly. So I'll stay in. Perugly's at level 60. It knows Shadow Claw slash Hypnosis. And Aerial Ace, it missed Hypnosis, yes! So Earthquake should do a good chunk, except that Citrus Berry is going to give her back some health, which is pretty annoying. But yeah, this is the first little section of Stark Mountain. It's really just these two battles, and the main larger room is going to be in the next section. Alright, if you can miss another Hypnosis, that would be greatly appreciated. Or we get the Quick Claw, I will take that. I really don't want these battles taking too long because, again, we still got so much more to do. And then in tomorrow's episode, by the way, the plan is to actually catch Heatran because once you get done with the Team Galactic stuff here, you'll be able to catch Heatran for yourself, which is super hype. So, yeah, that's uh, another reason of why you should do all of this stuff. Even though it might seem annoying in the moment, it's going to be worth it. All right, let's go out to Mario for her goal bat, her final mon. It knows Poison Fang, Confuse Ray, Air Cutter, and Bite, so it can't really do much to your boy, which is very nice. And we can just throw some rocks at this guy, and hopefully we'll be chilling unless it starts to flinch me, which would be pretty unfortunate. But I can't remember if we get healed in between battles. Let's see, does, like, Buck jump in here? No, I really don't think Buck jumps in here um, to, like, heal us up. I think he comes in afterwards, so... That's a little unfortunate. Just get ready for uh, some tougher fights, I guess. But our team's going to be fine either way. We've got some good levels. I'm just really annoyed by these stupid Bronzongs that we have to deal with. And I don't think I get a chance to, like, switch around my team either. So um, we're going to have to switch out Glaceon at the beginning of the next battle. Ugh. Anyways, um, luckily after you defeat Mars and Jupiter... They're basically going to, like, leave Team Galactic because we all know Cyrus has already been gone and stuff. And they just, you know, don't really care about Charon and his plans. So, after you kind of, you know, defeat them in one last battle, bring their motivation down, they just sort of dip, which is pretty funny. And let's see. Yeah, we don't get healed. So, 
pretty unfortunate. There's not really much I can do here with you, Zare. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and use a Max Revive. I know, I'm crazy using a Max Revive outside of the Elite Four. But, hey, I've got six of them, so might as well use them throughout the post game. And we'll heal up George. And, okay, this one went for Reflect. Yeah, this Bronze Song's a little different. It knows Reflect, Extra Sensory, Rock Slide, and Gyro Ball. So, honestly, a little weaker, which is very fortunate. Hopefully, it went for Rock Slide and not Extra Sensory. Yes! Yeah, I was assuming it would since we were an Ice type. And that shouldn't do too much. Bronzong does not have great physical attack. That is for show. All right, so two flamethrowers should do the trick here. And uh, then again, Jupiter just has a Golbat and a Skunt Tank. That annoying freaking Skunt Tank. Luckily, we've got Earthquake now, which, you know, I think we had Earthquake for the double battle on Spear Pillar, to be fair. But it's just going to make it so much easier to deal with an extra sensory one-shot me, really. I mean, well, we did get some health already taken down, but... Man, that was a lot of damage. All right, Infernape did not have the best go around in these fights. We whip up the Sandstorm once again. I guess Crunch will do the job. It did the job last time. Let's see if it can do it again. Oh, I forgot about the Reflect. Ugh, that's annoying. We did get the Defense Drop, though, so the next one will probably kill. Extra Sensory. Still going to do a good amount of damage, even with the bulkiness of Hippaldon. Pretty unfortunate that Bronzong doesn't get affected by the Sandstorm, but you win some, you lose some. What can I say? Tons of EXP for uh, you, Zair and Moto. Moto Reflect wears off at a perfect time, and now you're going out to Golbat. All right, so I'll probably just go back into Mario, just like I did for Mars's Golbat. Now, this Golbat knows Giga Drain, Air Cutter, Mean Look, and Sludge Bomb. So, somewhat of a different moveset, but, you know, Poison Flying type. Just do the same stuff, and you should be good. Mean look does not even matter, Golbat. I'm not planning on switching, dude. I really am not. Now, as I said, this episode is probably going to be a long one. I'll have to cut out a lot of the battles in the larger room just because they're all double battles. They're against a bunch of tough trainers, and uh, there's just a ton of them, and they take a while. And I don't want this video being like over 30 minutes. I'd like to keep it in the low 20s if I could. And, uh, yeah, we'll eventually get to the back room and, you know, find Tehran back there and save the day, like always. You know, sorry if I'm just, like, spoiling things ahead of time, but, I mean, come on. This game's been out for over a decade, so it's not really spoilers. And, hey, Probo Pass is level 58. Feels like forever since he's leveled up. And now Jupiter will go out to her skunk tank. We've got hit pout on for the, uh, well... You are pretty low on health, so I guess I'll heal you, and hopefully we'll be fine. Yeah, Skunk Tank, just like Prugly, is going to be level 60, and it'll hold a Citrus Berry. Um, however, it knows Night Slash, Poison Jab, Smoke Screen, and Flamethrower. So, a pretty diverse moveset. Hopefully, it doesn't do a crazy amount of damage to Hippaldon. We better not have to, like, heal stall this thing. That would really suck. So, let's find out. Maybe I should just, like, cheat in more rare candies and uh, boost my team up to, like, level 90. That would make these battles fly by. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, nah, that'd be such, like, an anticlimactic way to end the post game though. And you burn me! Are you kidding? Oh, come on. That is so annoying. I mean, Flamethrower didn't even do that much, but now there's no point in going for Earthquake. Oh, just delaying the inevitable, aren't you, Skunk Tank? Stupid skunk. I can't even tell where your face is. So dumb. Yeah, I think I talked about it earlier in the series, but like, used to when I was younger, I thought the left side of its body was its face because of, um, I don't know, that little white spot looks like an eye, and then like you got its mouth kind of with those lines. I don't know, man. Young TQ, he had a weird imagination. Okay, earthquake, don't burn me, and we should be chilling. Now, I know there's a couple more items in this room that we can grab, so I'll try to look for those. I think one of them is hidden. Hopefully, this just kills them. I know Skunk Tank's pretty bulky and we're two levels, two levels lower, but I just want to be done with this battle. Can't even lie. So, yes. Nice job, Hit Paladon. You've become arguably the MVP of the team. I can't even lie. He's just such a beast. So glad I decided to use one. All right, so... Jupiter and Mars, they completely ditched the plan now, and they're like, all right, I'm done. Master Cyrus is gone. I hate Team Galactic. 
Tron gets pretty mad over that, but he is going to continue going on with his plans, and I think he will uh, take the grunts along with him too. So yeah, they'll go further back into the mountain. Jupiter, shut up. No one cares about your little inner monologue. And, um, yeah, Tron's like, yeah, I didn't need them anyways. I'm already smart enough to carry out this plan. Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but you don't have, like, any Pokemon to battle with. At least I don't think you do. So, you know, they'll go back further, and we'll see them a bit later. And for now, we will work our way through this little area. Again, I think there's some items we can pick up in, like, the corners of this room. So I'm going to try to grab those. I'll probably miss out on the hidden star piece, but we don't really need it, let's be honest. So first up is a PP up right there. And yeah, you will need strength for a lot of these items. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're with Buck in the next room, I don't think you can use strength and stuff. So you, oh shoot, I need to go back first, dang it. But yeah, you won't be able to grab every item in there. So what I'm actually gonna do in this video is just focus on defeating all of the trainers and then in tomorrow's video, when we come back for Heatran and we're by ourselves, I will grab all the items and there might even be some uh, battles we can do without Buck. I'm not 100% sure on that though. But yeah, anything that we can't do with Buck, I'll do in tomorrow's episode. And then we'll be done with Stark Mountain. And again, that's like the main um, location that you want to get to. And I don't want to break that rock first because we're going to get a full heal first. But yeah, it's the main location in this post game. So once you, you know, get through Stark Mountain, you've kind of done what there is to do. I guess you can check out the other routes, which we will. But then after that, I mean, we'll be doing like the freaking legendaries and stuff. And that'll be about the end of the series. Okay, last item of the bleh, last item to pick up is a full restore. And I'm not even going to bother healing because, again, we've got Buck coming up in this larger room. And you can tell how large it is because the camera literally zooms out. That's how large this place is. But here's Buck being slow as always, catching up to us. And it's time to pair up with him and get a move on. Now, I'm pretty sure you can use strength with him. Um, so I correct myself from earlier, but you can't use rock climb with him. That's what it is. So... Yeah, that's why you can't access some of the areas. And once again, I'm not going to worry about the items, just the trainer battles, as I think I'm heading towards an item right now. Oh, but there's also a trainer battle, so we're going to do that. One thing I forgot to mention about Buck is that he uses a level 63 Claydol in these double battles, but it knows, like, Psychic, which is good, and then Light Screen Reflect and Agent Power. So... It's similar to uh, Marley's Arcanine in that its moveset is kind of trash and Buck's going to spend most of the time just going for like reflect and light screen, which sucks. So uh, yeah, if you hated Marley, you might end up hating Buck even more. Anyways, we've got another double battle and I think we're towards the back of the room. We can actually like head up the staircase and go where we need to be right now, but you know, we're gonna keep on uh, exploring the area and fighting all the trainers that we can. Let me check if I was right about that. Ooh, maybe I wasn't right about that. Yeah, it's that little staircase that we need to take. All right, so I'll grab that item later. There may be a hidden item down there too, but for now, actually, let me see who's up front. Yeah, we still got Barrel up front, okay. Yuzair did level up again in that last fight, so Glaceon, you know, maybe he could be the MVP of the team because he's the highest level. He's been a beast. But let me work my way back down because I know I skipped out on another double battle, I think, on this level. Let's see. Are they down here? Yeah, there they are. Probably some ace trainers or dragon tamers. I would assume they're not bird keepers, but who knows? They could be. Actually, I think they might be because I'm looking at a bird keeper right now here on Bulbapedia. But yeah, literally there's like over 15 trainers in this place. So that's why I'm having to cut out a lot of them because, again, this video would just go on forever. But here is Buck's Clay Doll in action, and you can see how awful it is. So, woo, let's go. Now, I'm not really too worried about, like, my Pokemon dying or anything because, again, Buck just heals them up right after the fight magically. And, unfortunately, Clay Doll is, like, weak to a lot of things in here. I mean, this Glalie's got Ice Beam. Clay Doll got taken down pretty quickly in that last battle which was against that veteran and dragon tamer. Oh, and then Luxray has Thunder Wave. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? All right, it's fine. 
Another return will do the trick unless we die first, which we definitely could, considering that, um, hold on, I'm trying to find this battle. Oh, there it is. All right, again, there's like 20 trainers in here. Takes a while to scroll through the list and see what mods these people have. Anyways, down goes Glalie, one of the five mods taken down. And, all right, who's going to come out next? Might be, oh, it's going to be the Crobat for sure. Yeah, this is the guy with two mods, so... I don't know. I'll try to take down the Crobat, I guess. I don't really want to bother switching out. And, oh, you went for Confuse Ray. All right, honestly, at this point, Luxray just hit me with, like, a Thunder. Hit me with a freaking Zeus type of Thunder, because I just want to die. No, not Facade. No, no, no. And you're using Facade the wrong way. It does double damage when you're paralyzed or poisoned. Not when I'm paralyzed. All right, come on, flinch me, Crobat. Woo, cheering for the other team, because I kind of just want Bucky to go down. All right, there we go. <laughs> wow, that sounded awful, but oh my gosh, he's still alive. Oh, and of course, we landed too. All right, I guess I'll take the extra damage. But like, we just need someone else to get out here. Probably Hippaldon, and we'll be good to go. Or honestly, Probopass would work, I think, with uh, Rock Slide. We could get damage on both of them. That would be pretty nice. And now our Reflect wore off. You can see that Claydol's already dead after like the second turn. So again, the Claydol's just not that good. Lucario is by far like the best partner Pokemon you're going to get in this game back in um, Iron Island. Because yeah, it's not happening here with these noobs. They freaking stink. And we get paralyzed again. Luxray, you really stink, don't you? You really do. All right, this is going to be split damage. So, yeah, it's not going to kill the Crobat. Unfortunate. And we don't even outspeed any of them, so we can't hope for any flinches. All we can hope for is to break through paralysis and confusion. I just want this Crobat to go down, and the battle gets like 10 times easier. But the issue is, can we get through it? Does this Luxray not know any electric type moves? <laughs> like, why is it just going for facade? Can you imagine it literally just has a move set of two? Thunder Wave and facade. I mean, then this guy just doesn't deserve to call himself an Ace Trainer, man. Ace Trainer a bell? Like, come on. You gotta give your Luxray more than two options to attack with. But no, he literally doesn't know an Electric-type move. I mean, dude, even, like, Crunch would be better than Facade. Alright, we land Rock Slide, so that will make this a one-on-one, -on -one finally. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh. Down you go. And, uh, alright, that takes you down into yellow. I think I'm just gonna make this easy, though, and switch out to Moto Moto. And, uh, then this other Ace Trainer has a Gliscor and an Ursarang coming out after the Lux race, so we should be able to deal with them just fine. I can just imagine Buck standing back there like, Oh, yeah, my Claydaw, you know, he did his best. Now you just take on the 1v2 yourself, Terraquake. Like, I hate Buck, because he's also a cocky trainer, too. Like, how are you going to be a cocky and confident trainer when you've got one Pokemon and it's a crappy clay doll? I mean, come on, dude. You just can't be like that. You really can't. All right, so Earthquake will finally take down the Luxray. He was out there forever. And now you're going out to who? Let it be the Gliscor. Actually, I've got counters for both of them, so I don't really care. Ursaring, that's fine. We will uh, switch out into George. I don't know if one close combat will knock this guy completely out. And if it doesn't, then Infernape's going down again. Which would be like the third time in the past two videos. Oh, and he's going for Swords Dance. Yo, chill, Grizzly Bear, chill. Oh my gosh, speaking of bears. Okay, this was hilarious. I was literally... Earlier tonight, I was having dinner. And, you know, TV was on. There was a commercial break or whatever. And there was a ad or advertisement for a movie called Cocaine Bear. Literally Cocaine Bear. And at first, like, I didn't know if it was real or not. Like, was it just some other company, like, you know, freaking Geico or something, just whipping out a crazy um, commercial because sometimes they do that. But, like, at the end, it popped up with, like, the rated R rating, and it's like in theaters, February, whatever. And I was just like, what in the world? Because literally the whole preview was a bear just attacking people and going ham. Because I guess it's on cocaine? I, I don't know. Like, I just saw this ad and I was flabbergasted, dude. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I gotta look into it. 
And hey, maybe I'll go see it in the movie theater. <laughs> oh, please tell me I'm not the only one that's seen that commercial. Hopefully someone else watching this video can relate because that just caught me so off guard. Like, <laughs> I had no idea what, it, what was going on. And then like for the movie to be called Cocaine Bear. Oh my gosh. All right. Gliss score is going to get one shot here. You are quad weak to ice, so I'm not even worried. And look at that. This video is already over 20 minutes, and we probably still have, like, four more double battles left. So, yeah, I'm cutting out most of them. Um, I just kind of have to. All right. Thanks for your help, Buck. Really appreciate it, my dude. But, yeah, I guess now I'll try to loop back around to the left side of the room. We've kind of covered most of the right side. I really wish we could use our bike. That would make this a lot quicker. And let's see, who's over here? Actually, wait, no, here's like a black belt. No, but I think you're a pretty easy battle. I won't battle you just yet. And, oh wait, no, that's the exit, shoot. No, 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 Buck. <laughs> I did not know that was the exit, my fault. All right, we'll go down here then and fight these trainers. Yeah, these trainers look tough. Wait, oh, see, I don't think we can get to them. No way, we might still be able to get to them. Let's see, if we take this staircase... Can we loop back around? No. Wait, yeah, we can. I think. Oh, but we have to go all the way around. See, like, who designed Stark Mountain this way? I like how I'm saying who designed it, even though it's probably, like, naturally made because it's a mountain. But, uh, come on, man. Like, what are we doing? And here they are guarding the staircase to probably, like, a freaking max potion or something. Well, there was a ton of electric types in that battle, perfect for Hippaldon, who got up to level 60 and then tried to get Fisher, which, don't get me wrong, Fisher is pretty freaking awesome, but the 30% accuracy is not a good trade-off compared to Earthquakes. So, yeah, I decided against it. For now, let's go back down this staircase, and then I'm going to try to find that little black belt dude that I saw earlier. I think they're over here. Yeah, here we go. I think this guy only has, like, one Pokemon, if I'm not mistaken, or two so, I don't know, we'll see. Is it the dude with the one Machamp or two? If it's the dude with one Machamp, then I'll do this battle because, like, you know, that's a pretty short fight. But no, it's the dude with two. Now, I know there was that double battle towards the top left of this room that we saw a second ago. I'm not going to go towards them just yet. For now, I'm going to look for the uh, other black belt I was talking about because that should be a relatively easy battle if I could just find my way around here. And I might um, correct myself again from earlier because I don't think there's anywhere you can use strength in this place. Or at least in this room. Okay, never mind. There's a strength boulder right there. <laughs> so there are places that you can use strength. I thought maybe there wasn't. Oh, well. Um, if we go through here, I'm trying to figure out how we get to kind of the, the back section. We were there earlier. Um, does this take us to it? Okay, this looks promising. This looks good. Unfortunately, though, we can't rock climb right to the exit with Buck by our side. Annoying little Buck. So, I think I'm just gonna continue going this way and see what it has in store for us. Let's see, this better not be a dead end. Alright, good. Here we go. This should be the pretty easy battle. And then I think after these two people, we just have one more double battle to go. So, that's pretty exciting, man. Get freaking pumped. Let's do this. And yeah, luckily, because it's a black belt, we've got a uh, Wormadam up front, and then we've also got the Clay Doll. So, a uh, pretty good combo to take down the level 60 Machamp. Sheesh. Yeah, you already know this thing's about to whip out like Dynamic Punch or Cross Chop. And Clay Doll goes for Reflect. Dude, come on. Like, we could have taken the Machamp out on this turn, but no. Buck's an idiot and goes for Reflect. I mean, it's a little helpful, but. Come on, not too helpful when this thing has Fire Punch. I did not know it got that. Will we even live with the Reflect? No. Oh, wait, no, we will. And Gibble went for Wormadam. Sweet. Wow, I was actually surprised we lived that. Well, hey, uh, you kind of saved me there, Clay Doll. Can't even lie. Will this take it out? Let's see. Oh, yeah, critical hit. Might have needed it. Maybe we didn't, but I'll take it either freaking way. Level 59. For the main man, Benny, let's go. And now it's just a 2v1, so this should not be nearly as bad. And Wormadam's going to go down, but that's fine. I'm okay with that because now we've got Glaceon coming out, and you know what that means. Glaceon against a Dragon Tamer? Psh, we've seen that happen 
too many times before. Glaceon is going to absolutely wreck shop. Um, I think this guy might have, like, the full Gibble line. Oh, well, he has Gabite and then Dragonair. Why doesn't he just get that Garchomp, you know? I mean, heck, this Gibble's level 57. <laughs> Mans could really have two Garchomps right now. Dragon Tamer Drake. Yo, maybe this is, like, Drake retired from the Hoenn region. And he just, I don't know, he's just chilling here in Stark Mountain with his little buddy Black Belt. And, uh, he just doesn't want to evolve his Dragon types, because he could also have a Dragonite. But, uh, no. Kind of wish he did, though, because then that'd mean Ice Beam's quad affected. It would do even more damage to those stupid Dragon types. Yeah, hopefully this is showing y'all that Ice types shouldn't be underrated. They're very useful typings. And one more Ice Beam will do the trick. So... Once again, thanks for your help there, Buck. Really, really appreciated it. Did he even land a hit? I think he used a Psychic on the Gibble, and that was it. I mean, come on, dude. Come the heck on. All right, so let's try and go back to the top left. I'm pretty positive that's the last trainer battle in this area. Um, actually, I guess it wasn't really the top left, because this is the top left. Okay, so it's like middle left, if you really want to get technical. The question is, how do I get down there how do i get down there how do i get down there i don't know we're gonna try and find out oh if i had rock climb i'd be able to get down there also look how fast a buck walks <laughs> that's so funny it's because buck i guess doesn't have running shoes so he just has to walk like super fast <laughs> oh i just noticed that that's hilarious you can't really see it when we're running um like straight this way but like to the side you can see it <laughs> his like feet move so fast all right, so let's just go back to where we were earlier, which was somewhere over here where we fought the first couple trainers. Um, and then if I could get to the staircase, I believe the people are waiting for us over here, waiting for us to destroy them or waiting for me to destroy them because Buck doesn't do anything. And I guess you actually do need strength to access them. But thank goodness this is like the final battle in today's episode because yeah this video it's probably still gonna be over 30 minutes i can't even lie um which is kind of crazy longest terror quake walkthroughs episode right here baby right here yo mad respect to one of those trainers i don't really know which one it was but one of them had a torterra which is freaking awesome because torterra is the best pokemon ever made but we are finally done with the trainer battles in here so now it's time to try and figure out how i get back to the exit or not the exit to the mountain, but the exit to this place, and that is not the right way. If only we had Rock Climb and didn't have Buck with us, we'd be good. But no, Buck is with us, unfortunately. And yeah, in the back room, we'll find Team Galactic Grunts and Tron again. But luckily, if I'm remembering correctly, we don't have to battle any of them. And if we do, then that's going to be annoying. Okay, so I think it was this way, and then we went down here, and then we need to get to that staircase, which can we get from going this way? Not really. No, wait. If we go all the way around and keep staring at Buck's little tiny feet that are just moving along as fast as they can, and then we've got strength. I think if we just push this all the way to the end, we should be good to go. This cannot be, like, you know, good for my character, man. Just charging at a boulder over and over. But here we go. We can finally get inside the last room. And this is the room home to the Magma Stone. But Buck wants to protect it from Team Galactic. So let's see what's going on in here. Oh my gosh, they got the Magma Stone. Crazy. No way. Now, do the Grunts battle us? I don't think they do. Oh yeah, look at that. The whole freaking room is shaking. And it's because... Team Galactic's messing with the Magma Stone. So that kind of shows them like, hey, you shouldn't do that. Heatran's getting mad. And then, look who pops out. A Krogunk from a rock. What? No way. How did it do that? But it turns out it's a Looker disguising himself as a boulder. He comes out of nowhere, arrests Charon, and that officially puts an end to Team Galactic because the Galactic Grunts, they're not trying to get arrested, so they yeet on out of here and uh yeah looker comes in to save the day he actually did something for once um you know going against team galactic and all so yeah go looker woo and then there's actually a cop coming in and two cops coming in when have you seen the police force in pokemon actually do something with the evil team now you have pretty freaking crazy 
Anyways, Looker kind of just talks to us, and now we are going to go to the outside of Stark Mountain. And, um, yeah, the Magma Stone, I think, has been put back into its original placement. Or, well, Buck's gonna take it and put it back, so, yeah, you go for it, Buck. And Looker's gonna tell us some more about Tron and Team Galactic and say that they're done forever. And Buck is back now. And Buck's actually gonna tell us to meet him back at his house in the survival area. And that's that house that was locked earlier. So we're gonna do that in tomorrow's episode. I like how they had to show Buck walking all the way around. Just because it wouldn't make sense. But yeah, we're gonna do that in tomorrow's video when we also attempt to catch Heatran. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the longest TerraQuake walkthroughs episode. Have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!